at the 10 hottest years ever measured, they've all occurred in the last 14 years. And the hottest of all was 2005. The scientific consensus is that we are causing global warming. I am Al Gore. I used to be the next president of the United States of America. This is Patagonia 75 years ago and the same glacier today. This is Mount Kilimanjaro 30 years ago and last year. Within the decade, there will be no more snows of Kilimanjaro. This is really not a political issue so much as a moral issue. Temperature increases are taking place all over the world and that's causing stronger storms. in the history of this country. Early this morning, Hurricane Katrina slammed into New Orleans. Is it possible that we should prepare against other threats besides terrorists? From Paramount Classics comes a film that has shocked audiences everywhere they've seen it. The Arctic is experiencing faster melting. If this were to go, sea level worldwide would go up 20 feet. This is what would happen in Florida. Around Shanghai, home to 40 million people. The area around Calcutta, 60 million. Here's Manhattan. The World Trade Center Memorial would be underwater. Think of the impact of a couple hundred thousand refugees, and then imagine a hundred million. We have to act together to solve this global crisis. Our ability to live is what is at stake. This is the year of climate. The Paris negotiation is crucial. In order to ensure its success, we need the political will. But political will is a renewable resource. And as part of the effort to renew that global political will, I am very excited, grateful uh, to Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum that we, that my colleagues and I in just a moment are able to announce uh, here on this stage in Davos a major event this year. I want to invite uh, the legendary uh, artist, beloved, uh, a uh, creative uh, artist, Pharrell Williams, who is the creative director of Live Earth, to join me on stage with Kevin Wall, the co-founder of Live Earth, and the one who makes it all happen. Please uh, come on up. And the creative director is a man I'm proud to call a friend who I admire greatly, Pharrell Williams. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Al Gore. I'm opening this uh, plenary to, uh, to preview this outstanding panel that's going to come up here. I want to set the stage, uh, if I could, uh, to all of the distinguished guests. I don't have my distance glasses on, but uh, Your Highness, Hilda Schwab. I want to thank Klaus Schwab for convening uh, this plenary on this topic. And I want to note that this is the fourth year in a row that uh, the World Economic Forum uh, has named the climate crisis as the number one threat to the global economy. I want to turn directly to the subject uh, of our, our planet because you are a very skilled observer and over a lifetime, uh, over all this time, you have uh, watched this climate crisis and, and the crisis in hu humanity's relationship to nature develop. What have you learned? How serious is this? And I heard your talk last night, and I thought it was very eloquent, but how serious is this in your view? I can't imagine anything more serious. Yeah. I really can't. Um, and the, the, the trouble is that change is accelerating, isn't it not? Yeah. Uh, that things are getting worse faster than they were. Yeah. Um, and, but the maddening thing is that we now know how to deal with it. I think you can probably put them in the same basket. What greater threat to our well-being is there than the current threat of climate change? Yeah. Standing here in the English countryside, it may not seem obvious, but we are facing a man-made disaster 
on a global scale. In the 20 years since I first started talking about the impact of climate change on our world, conditions have changed far faster than I ever imagined. We still have time to turn everything around, to, to pull the emergency brake and to take action. But that short period of time isn't going to last for long. There's a message for all of us in the voices of these young people. It is, after all, their generation who will inherit this dangerous legacy. We now stand at a unique point in our planet's history, one where we must all share responsibility, both for our present well-being and for the future of life on Earth. Right now, we're facing a man-made disaster of global scale, our greatest threat in thousands of years, climate change. If we don't take action, the collapse of our civilizations and the extinction of much of the natural world is on the horizon. Within the next decade or so, we are going to pass a number of tipping points, beyond which it's going to be very difficult to recover. Reckless burning of fossil fuels, the destruction of the forests, pollution of the ocean. How is it possible that the most intellectual being that ever walked the planet is destroying its only home? Since 1970s, we lost 60% of vertebrate species. If we look at insects, we lost 80%. As we lose species, what we also lose is the capacity of the natural systems to really provide the services that allow us to function. One of the consequences of living in great cities, in great masses, is that we are cut off from that natural world. If you lose that sense of wonder, you've lost one of the most important things in your life. My name is Greta Thunberg. I'm 60 years old, I come from Sweden, and I want you to panic. I want you to act as if the house was on fire. Our house is on fire. According to the IPCC, we are less than 12 years away from not being able to undo our mistakes. Yes, we are failing, but there is still time to turn everything around we can still fix this. Solving the climate crisis is the greatest and most complex challenge that Homo sapiens have ever faced. The main solution, however, is so simple that even a small child can understand it. We have to stop the emissions of greenhouse gases. And either we do that or we don't. Either we prevent a 1.5 degree of warming, or we don't. Either we avoid setting off that irreversible chain reaction beyond human control, or we don't. Either we choose to go on as a civilization, or we don't. Adults keep saying, we owe it to the young people to give them hope. But I don't want your hope. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. And then I want you to act. I want you to act as if you would in a crisis. I want you to act as if the house was on fire. Yes, it is.